so fat. They're developing a lot of type 2 diabetes, which is now, it is now becoming competitive as far as the number of cases, type 1 versus type 2. Well, type 1 diabetes is where the pancreas is destroyed. The initiation of that destruction is caused by cow milk protein entering the bloodstream. That's what the scientific research says. In fact, it is so compelling that the American Academy of Pediatrics Work Group on Cow's Milk Protein and Diabetes in 1994 made a statement that still stands today. They said early exposure of infants to cow's milk protein may be an important factor in the initiation of the beta cell destructive processes in some individuals. Beta cells are what make insulin in the pancreas of the child. And they recommended that you stop feeding cow's milk to children to prevent insulin dependent diabetes, type 1 diabetes. Many of you are on the internet and if you go to the internet and you plug in cow milk or cow's milk and some interesting diseases, you'll find that the internet at the National Library of Medicine will take and provide you a tremendous amount of information on how cow's milk, particularly cow milk protein, is associated with many of our common diseases. If you go there and type in some of the following diseases, you'll find some very interesting research that shows that cow's milk is associated with or definitely the cause of various problems that are quite serious and quite common, like canker sores, tonsil enlargement. You think it's normal to have enlarged tonsils? These tonsils are enlarged to take and defend you. What they do is they serve a purpose. What happens is tonsils form a barrier at the beginning of the intestinal tract and they're there to protect you from invading substances like viruses and bacteria. Well, one of the invading things that comes into the body that's not natural and shouldn't be there is cow milk. Not human breast milk, but cow milk. And so the tonsils enlarge and then they eventually get worn down and infected. There's actually a study done where they took children off of cow milk with very severe tonsil enlargement and the tonsils, they shrunk. Vomiting problems, gastroesophageal reflux, ulcer disease, various colic problems. Even children that are breastfed. You know children who are breastfed are not supposed to get colic? But they do if the mother consumes cow's milk. And then what happens is the cow milk protein, you can actually measure this in the mother's milk. It goes into the baby's intestinal tract and the baby gets colic. So not only do you have to breastfeed your child, you also have to have a clean diet yourself to prevent this common allergic type of reaction called colic from occurring in a breastfed baby. Lower intestinal problems are quite common also and caused by dairy products such as bloody stools, painful defecation, constipation as I talked to you about, colitis, Crohn's disease and all sorts of colitis have all been associated with dairy product consumption. Respiratory problems such as nasal stuffiness, runny nose, ear infections, sinusitis, asthma, wheezing problems. Bone problems such as generalized nonspecific arthritis rheumatoid arthritis and even juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. I want to tell you, if you want to see a sad case, a couple of times in my medical practice I have seen children, young children who have juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. It's a terrible disease. These children, their bones don't grow. They look like uh, refugees, like little children that would come out of a prisoner of war camp. They're usually in wheelchairs. They have little tiny jaws. Their life is, of course, very short and very painful. I have had two children in my practice who have, their parents have understood the message that this can be caused by callous milk consumption and both those kids were cured of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And by the way, that happens to also be published in a British medical journal. Lupus, other kinds of arthritis, dairy products are what you want to think of first. Skin problems like rashes, atopic dermatitis, eczema, seborrhea and hives. Nervous system problems such as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, autism and schizophrenia. There is research in the scientific literature that you can easily find that talks about the cause of autism from cow's milk consumption and the cure of these children simply by changing their diet. Headache problems, fatigue, mental depression, bedwetting problems. You know that psychiatric problem that your child developed because somehow when you changed his or hers diaper you touched in the wrong place? You know that problem, you have to take the child to the psychiatrist to get uh, counseling every month because the child has this psychological problem called bedwetting. Well, I can't tell you the number of parents that write me that say, I've taken the child faithfully to the psychiatrist or the psychologist for years and they continue to wet their bed until I listen to your advice, which is to get them off the dairy products. 
It's well described in the scientific literature. What happens is the children consume the milk, goes into their intestinal tract, in some kids it gets through the gut into the bloodstream, and then it is excreted through the kidney system into the bladder. Well, in the bladder it causes an allergic type of reaction. And what happens is the bladder linings, they swell like a giant hive. And as a result of the swelling, the bladder linings become insensitive so the child can't feel the urine build up in the bladder. And so they go to bed at night, the urine builds up, and the first thing they notice is wet bed sheets. You take the kids off the milk, the swelling disappears, the sensitivity returns, and the bedwetting, the psychiatric emotional problem disappears in many of these children. Very simple solution to the problem. Miscellaneous problems such as iron deficiency and anemia, nephrotic syndrome, this is where the children lose their kidneys from a, an allergic type of reaction. Glomerular nephritis where adults also have a similar problems, SIDS and also hardening of the arteries or atherosclerosis. A lot of you out there have artery problems. You've made some good changes. You've tried to get the fat and the cholesterol out of your diet and I think that's good. But unfortunately many of you have not completed the message. You've not really make a, made the step that will really get you to a minimal chance of causing this disease to progress, this closure of the arteries, atherosclerosis which leads to heart attacks and strokes. You switch to skim milk. Yeah, taking the fat of the cholesterol is good, but what happens is the cow milk protein gets into the bloodstream and the body makes antibodies to the cow milk protein that attack the lining of your arteries. And it's found in scientific studies that people who have the rottenest arteries have the highest levels of antibodies directed to cow milk protein in their bloodstream. The dairy industry is well aware of these problems. I've been discussing these problems with them for decades and their only rebuttal is money, $166 million a year. And that could buy a lot of research, a lot of scientists, and a lot of advertisement, and a lot of misinformation. I introduced you to Dr. Greg Miller in the last lecture. Let me tell you a little bit more about Dr. Greg Miller. I mentioned to you he's the Senior Vice President of Nutrition Research for the Dairy Association. He's involved in the Dairy Management Incorpor Incorporation movement where that is uh, the organization that manages Dairy Checkoff 2003 which is out there to promote dairy products for you and your family by designing and carrying out scientific research to, to prove the healthfulness of dairy products and also they're out there to promote dairy to your children so they become lifelong consumers. Well, Greg Miller, he's involved in that. Let me tell you how I met him. It was back in the spring of 1993. I did a show, a national television show. It was on a program called Lifestyle Magazine that I had a regular segment on. And I had a guest on the show. His name was Dr. Virgil Hulse. Dr. Hulse was an MD, a PhD. He was a former dairy inspector of the state of California. We talked about the health consequences of the dairy products. Now remember this was 1993. We talked about mad cow disease, we talked about bovine leukemia virus, bovine immune deficiency virus, we talked about heart attacks and obesity and allergies and problems that you knew about for years related to dairy products. We talked about all those things. In the dairy industry they saw the show. And so they wrote my producer a letter and said we need equal time. And my producer wrote back and said okay fine, you can have equal time. You can be on the show, you can counteract what Dr. McDougall said, but he will be on stage with you. And so we met. We met on Lifestyle Magazine in June of 1993. And we did a half an hour television show. And he said the dairy industry has a fine reputation. They're a trusted industry. And that was the bulk of his argument, except he had one special argument that I want to share with you. And this was the main thrust of why you should believe dairy products are good for you. He wouldn't counteract the fact that the dairy products were full of viruses and other kinds of microbes, that they promote heart disease and obesity and diabetes and other problems. He wouldn't counteract any of that. What his main argument was is about three minutes into the show, he reached into his pocket and he told us why you should consume dairy products. He said if there was any thought that dairy